Hello everyone, this is Patty at Cabin Fever Soaps and Essentials. I have been asked to um, do a video making my liquid soap. Today we're going to make liquid soap with uh, red clover and chamomile. And they are infused for, oh, probably about 11 months in extra virgin olive oil. So that's what I'm using to put in here. And I'm getting ready to mix up my lye. Um, I use a uh, uh, dual lye, which is the two lyes of potassium hydroxide, which you use for making liquid soap, and then a high, um, sodium hydroxide lye to make um, the bar soap. So, um, I water that I use only when I do liquid soap is distilled water. Uh, when I make bar soap, I use rainwater or the tap water, which we are on a well. Uh, it doesn't bother it at all. But with uh, a liquid soap, you want it as clear as possible. So I make sure that I use the distilled water. Um, <clears throat> I have uh, water and glycerin in this. And I'm getting ready to put the dual lyes in here and it will heat up the um, potassium hydroxide. Uh, heats up real, real fast and makes funny noises and all that, but that's just part of it. And I just added them together, put them in here, and I'll mix them up. My lye or my oils in the pot are uh, extra, extra virgin olive oil and castor. Um, the castor gives it um, the bubbles that I like. Um, Castell soap uh, is very very mild that which is usually a hundred percent olive oil but it doesn't have the bubbles so I like the bubbles. Who doesn't? So I'm going to mix them up and then I'm going to put them in there and then I'm going to use my uh, blender um, to mix it up and I won't show all of that but it's going to take my last uh, oh bit of liquid soap took about seven hours so it's not just a couple hours it's seven hours um, due to the high um, percent of olive oil so I won't put that on the video but anyways let's get going and that's tater barking about anything Tater, you be quiet. Okay. Just throw it all in there. And you'll hear it start to heat up. Can you hear it? Sounds like it's boiling. But anyways, it's going to be extremely hot when I put it in the oils. Um, the oils are on low and um, for somehow, if I don't let this cool, it traces a lot faster. And that's what I'm going to do if I can keep this thing plugged in. And pour this in here. Mix it up. I hope you can see good. It's a black pot. to get that plug fixed. And it's going to take a while, so I am going to pause you and I'll bring you back when it gets a little bit 
ready to quit blending. Now I moved um, my setting up to high and I won't keep it on there but it does help get uh, to a trace stage. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I'm telling you with allergies. Anyways, um, I've been asked why use the dual lies and um, I've made it each way with just uh, potassium hydroxide and also uh, with the dual. Um, I like adding the sodium hydroxide uh, to my liquid soap. It's only at a 10% and the potassium hydroxide is at a 90. What it does is it gives uh, the liquid soap um, a thicker um, <coughs> It, it makes it thicker and it doesn't when you go to add uh, the dilution um, to the paste after it's finished uh, sometimes with olive oil you have to really add uh, more water to dilute it than any of your other mixture of oils so adding the sodium hydroxide makes it so it stays a little bit more fluid and I don't have to use as much um, dilution uh, to make to dissolve the soap paste and we'll see that and it'll probably be in, a, in another video. Um, I chose the red clover because it is so good for inflammation on the skin and it is filled with wonderful nutrients that with the saponification doesn't take it away and that is our minerals uh, calcium, chromium, magnesium, potassium all those will um, stay after it goes through the process of making soap <coughs> excuse me now it also has um, a lot of wonderful vitamins in it but they're water soluble for instance like your vitamin B's and C's I don't see how that is going to uh, make it through um, the process of soap but that's okay if you were going to take uh, uh, red clover and put it in tea or whatever uh, you'll have all those benefits and red, red clover is very good uh, ingestion but um, you need to follow and read up on any kind of herbs that you tend to use um, internally um, due to different medications like I have high blood pressure so I have to be very very careful um, how much I take um, it's not like um, you know essential oils or something like that but if I did it constantly it might present a problem with interfering with uh, some of my medications and so if it's absorbed transdermal and that's with the minerals and the other uh, things that help with inflammation on on top of the skin um, taking your minerals trans transdermal well your body will only absorb as as much as it is needed so that's a really nice plus um, with the chamomile flowers um, of course that was infused for 10 or 11 months in my extra virgin olive oil and it treats all different types of skin conditions and inflammations uh, due to Oh, abrasions, you know, small cuts and insect bites and things like that. And it also helps to a smooth eczema and um, helps relax the muscles. And believe it or not, it kills bacteria, fungus, and viruses. Um, that is a case study in the labs, of course, uh, in the petri dishes. 
And if you're interested in reading, you know, <laughs> the research like I do, um, you find a really good source if you go to University of Maryland, the medical center and the research part. So I won't bore you with that, but it's starting to thicken up. And I know it's kind of hard to see, but I just keep stirring it so that I'm not going to burn out uh, my blender. Um, what else can I talk about? Oh, uh, chamomile flowers um, is one of the most popular herbs used, uh, whether if it's uh, infusions uh, to put on top of skin or to drink as a tea. Um, a lot of people think, oh, well, something is so good, and they only read just a little bit, then they run into troubles. Uh, if they don't understand what they're taking, and like I said, for an extended amount of time uh, to build up, you know, in your system. Um, <clears throat> chamomile also soothes um, eczema and helps, I guess I said that, to relax the muscles. Um, chamomile is really good to uh, oh, make teas and put them in your bath and just soak in them. Um, but it does thin the blood and so it is good to put uh, like a tea mixture uh, on hemorrhoids and varicose veins and things like that. And the reason is it's because it thins blood. Um, so you have to be careful with indigest or ingesting, but um, when it's topical, you still have to be concerned about chamomile because if you are allergic, <coughs> excuse me, allergic to ragweed, daisies, mums, uh, yeah, you put this on your skin even if it's just a, a wash off problem or product like soap or if it is made in ointments or things like that because if you're allergic to these things um, you will definitely have a reaction so please 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 read what you put on your body or you take internally um, with all products no matter where you get it Put a little small amount applied oh the under skin of your arm right here that's a good soft spot and leave it on there for a little bit and then see if you have any react reaction to it as far as getting a rash or swelling or things like that so it's just a little bit of talking while i'm stern here um so I think I will give it another buzz and I will pause you and get back with you in just a little bit. As you can see right now, I'll just hold it up right here. Maybe I can get a little bit closer. It's in like the applesauce stage and it's still got a little bit while to, to go, but that's the applesauce stage at the beginning and then it will try to separate and that's why I blend it back in. All right, I'll bring you back. Now it's getting towards <coughs> the mashed potato stage, I guess that's what, anyways, that's what it reminds me of. And it is thicker and it doesn't take very long uh, <laughs> if you keep it hot. But anyway, see, it's looking good. And so all I have to do is just stir it a little bit. I don't think I'll use uh, my blender anymore unless it comes, um, oh, it starts separating. But usually at this stage, I just keep stirring it up and then it's gonna get to where I can't stir it at all. And that's when I turn it down low and I let it start to cook. And oh, I keep an eye on it like every 15 and then 30 minutes and just keep an eye so that it doesn't boil over or starts doing anything funky. And yes, I've had them go over because I got preoccupied. 
but it's been many years since then. But it's starting to thicken up and then I'm not going to be able to stir it. Then it will start relaxing towards the end and it will be a thick paste and then the next day is when I'll start diluting it. I like to let it set overnight and sometimes I cover it up to just to stay warm just so that uh, there isn't any um, oils floating around and uh, that it is completely done. I don't have to worry about it anymore. And then after you uh, dilute it and it's ready to go you can use it but I found out that if you let it sequester for about two weeks then it becomes even milder and um, the longer it sets the milder it gets and that's the same thing with bar soap or any type of handmade soap um, <coughs> Anyways, uh, after it cooks and it cools down and I dilute it, um, just to the warm of the touch, I, uh, um, I will put in um, a preservative. Anytime you use anything with water, do not be crazy and stupid to think that, oh, nothing's going to you know, harm me. There are bacteria, mold, um, all different kinds of stuff that you can't see with the naked eye. And so why take a chance on it? The preservative I use is uh, one of the closest natural preservatives that you could use and that's Optifin. And it is made out of um, <coughs> alcohols of fruits and it's a broad spectrum so I, I do not worry about uh, yeast or any other type of gram positive or gram negative bacteria um, and it also kills if there's any mold or something so I feel pretty safe by adding that and I really don't care if other soap makers do not do that that's up to them and I'm not knocking them but as for me in my house uh, it's getting the best preservative possible in there all right I'll bring you back okay <clears throat> this is going to be the last of this first part one video but this is what it looks like it's not going to be real oh I don't know what you'd say real thick because of the dual lines but this is just where I leave it and I just let it cook and then in the morning I will bring you back because it's going to be about 10 o'clock tonight when I turn this off and then I'll wrap it up and just let it sit overnight and in the morning I'll start uh, the uh, diluting the paste. So everybody have a good day, a good afternoon and a good evening and that March snowstorm that is supposed to come this way um, I hope everybody's prepared and got everything covered and maybe it will be our last of the snow and spring will finally get here. Alright, I'll talk to you later.